So the aim of this tutorial is in 15 minutes to build a little still life scene. Uh, I'm going to go to the create menu here and go for additional primitives which are made by Rashad Carter and they're excellent and we're looking for 50% oh, capsule. This is going to be like a little uh, medicine capsule. I chose 50% because the ends were flattened which means I could, allows me to stretch it to make it more appropriate dimensions. I'll lay it down on its side and I'm going to move the camera around so we can get a closer look. So here we go, this is our capsule. Alright, I want to sort the material out so it looks appropriate for this and possibly make it a little bit longer, I don't know. And for that I'm going to uh, borrow one of the scenes that I provided with Bry 7.1 for free to demonstrate the anisotropic effect and the material I want to steal is this uh, surface of this disc which is here, disc surface, material and then I can just add that to the material library and then that will be available I've added it to the library in my other scene so if I go into the material library now and then I can recover that material and use it on my capsule it's not really uh, appropriate yet but it, it's going to provide a starting point I'm just moving the sun around a bit to get the, the light where I want it what I'm particularly looking for is to control the specular halo here because that's going to uh, uh, create the effect of it being a plastic material so we'll look in the material this uh, radial spectrum here is the one that's running down the side it doesn't want to be really strongly rainbow colored for my purposes so if I go into the texture source editor and modify these uh, colors to white I'm just picking white off the other, other monitor but uh, you could you could pick it from the little um, menu that appears as well it's just easier to do it that way for speed there's also the option here <coughs> excuse me to use actual selection which will show you a, a preview of what uh, what your material looks like on the object which is handy for what we're doing here I'm going to want it to be slightly bumpy so I'm going to steal the specular halo channel I'll just set the halo down to grey that'll make it uh, a little bit thinner this will controls how much the halo spreads and uh, borrow the fourth channel for the bump height. I'm going to set that up to quite bumpy and uh, I'll go into the uh, hold shift key down and click on the name that'll allow me to go into the texture library and I'll go for basic and I'll select uh, this one wave 2. So that's, uh, you can see it's, it's already had an effect on the material. If I go in there I'll take the second channel and copy it to the first channel and uh, and then just use one channel at the moment and uh, then I'm going to set the the frequency down here so that it just makes it look a bit uh, a bit like rumpled plastic it's, the strikes effects a bit strong there so I'll turn the bump effect down and we'll see whether that looks like wrinkly plastic now perhaps a little bit too strong still we can uh, we can modify that down and the other thing I want to do is obviously provide some color for this um, uh, again, I could borrow borrow this for channel for that purpose. So if I do that, that that puts the colour on, but that's not really an appropriate colour for what I'm looking for. I want to split in half. So if I go into here, uh, I can use the second channel, but I'll use it to provide colour. If I use um, a parallel, it'll just take the outputs. I'll check that there's no output of colour here, so I'll turn that to none because it was providing some colour there and then we'll open the control for the deep taste editor go into the noise for component 2 and I'll select square because that gives me some sharp divisions uh, at the moment it's rotated round so if I get that down to 0 and then I hold the alt key down and click on that 0 it squares the pattern up then I can change it into one dimension which gives me stripes if I hold the alt key down and click on the frequency that makes all the frequencies the same and I'll reduce the frequency a bit there so we've just got these stripes and uh, we'll see ah, we have no colour output here so if we use linear interpol 2 that'll split the colour between the two channels and uh, I want one to be blue so I'll just make one of the channels blue and then I'll hold that hold the alt key down while clicking on this the colour swatch will give me this little menu I'll make the other red so I'm just getting the RGB control there if I check out of that now you can see I've got it divided in two but it's divided in the wrong direction so go back into the deep text editor and modify the noise if we rotate it round 90 degrees yeah, about on exactly on 90 
that will provide me with a 90 degree split but it's stripy now so this can be corrected by using the transformation tools and modifying the frequency so we just get frequency fairly low frequency which uh, some I'm doing them all at once will allow me to have half and half so that's about there so let's see how that looks so okay that's sort of getting where I want it to look I've got it divided into, I've got it a little bit reflective, maybe a bit too reflective. I'll go back into the material, I'll lower the reflection down. We've got our specular highlight there. Uh, the metallicy will control how much of the colours that are provided in the diffuse channel go into the reflection channel. So I'll try a half and half there, that'll allow that to be reflecting a little more of the environment lighting. So now it comes down to a question of lighting. and. Uh, and and the sun position so I mean, there's only so much you can do with the the basic Bryce lighting setup before you need to look for more sophisticated solutions and what I want to do in this is use um, premium render options premium effects true ambience rendering and use TA scattering correction for the best effect and this will improve the, the quality of the lighting because it provides a uh, genuine um, gathered effect of, of uh, ambient lights in these uh, in, the, in the shadow region so you get very high quality shadows and it also transfers the color from one area to the next but still uh, the the lighting is a little bit plain because we're still just using the default bright sky and you also know the render speeds uh, slowed down so what I'll do is I'll use the document setup and change the document size down a bit so we can get the render speed back up and I'm also going to use image based lighting uh, to, to as a source for the Trambian's uh, lighting so to do that we'll, we'll just have a we'll use one of uh, Horro's products so if I go to Bryce Tutorials go to Bryce Downloads and go down this list and look for Horro it's down here here HDRI Pack 1 and I'm going to use this one from the pack I've, uh, I've already got that loaded in so if I go back to my scene and go to the Skylab, go to the IBL tab, use HDRI image, open. Uh, this is it. Uh, the number after the name indicates the size of the HDRI. So the higher resolution ones give a better quality of backdrop, but we're only going to use it as a light source so we can get away with a low resolution one. We're not actually using HDRI lighting uh, directly. This is an indirect method, so uh, I'll just turn the quality down because it tends to improve ref performance anyway, but we won't be simulate, uh, producing simulated light sources. I'll use render in scene, so you can see we're not producing much light. This is only, preview only works in HDRI mode, but it gives a guide as to what you're going to see. So I'll increase the light. It still looks a bit dim. Uh, and I'm going to make sure that this is added to the sky as a backdrop and you'll notice the sun's been automatically disabled we'll leave it switched off for the moment and I'll show you how the true ambience mode works even without um, a direct light source of the sun this is just gathering the light from the uh, the background image which uh, I'll just save this camera position we'll tilt this back and uh, we've got the background image but it's also combined with the bright sky so we can turn the atmosphere off and you'll know, see everything's gone blue because it's added to the sky and just set that to black then we've just got the background image then any reflections are picking up from this background image the reflections add a bit of uh, sort of subtle effect to the surface but you'll also notice we've lost our specularity effect that's because the true ambience mode doesn't generate specularity so if we go back into the sky lab we can re-enable the sun go to the sun moon we'll turn the effect of the diffuse effect of the sun down because we want more ambient light uh, but I'm also going to add uh, soft shadows to improve the realism so when you're looking at something quite close and the sun shadows tend to be softened and uh, in order to get the soft shadows because if we have a look now at the, the, the shadows are still hard in order to get that in premium effects we have to remember to go into render options and turn on soft shadows and now that'll have softened the edges of those shadows just to add a little bit more realism and we should have also recovered our anisotropic effect there um, depending how much effect you want you need to turn up the amount of specularity being generated by the sun so we could double that 
we get a bit of a stronger effect on there and um, I'm going to the material lab and turn the anisotropy down a bit so that's how much it's uh, stretching the halo along so it might be worth just turning that down a bit so it's not so strong and then increasing the effect from the sun accordingly and then there should be a bright spot appear there where th which is aligned uh, with where the sun is so can increase the specular effect to 400 all this fine tuning just helps the the level of realism in your scene the aim being to get it in this case because we're using a very um, sophisticated lighting model to to get things looking as as realistically as we can in uh, in the short time available to us so I think I might want a bit more light either from the background or the sun just to make that look a bit whiter so um, I'll try 100 which is where we were before but I say it's just fine tuning now that doesn't look too bad uh, we're getting an, a nice bit of reflection sort of giving us a form of uh, this material uh, but it looks a bit lonely and I was thinking if we could have a few more in this scene then uh, it would it would allow us to use depth of field effects if I take my capsule now and uh, copy and replace it and uh, maybe turn it round and move it to another position then I can sort of create some companions for this uh, a lone capsule so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a few of these and uh, I'll, I'll just stop the video while I do this because essentially the process is just going to be copying and pasting and moving them around like so okay right I finished copying and pasting and what I've noticed while uh, doing that is that the there's a little bit of a blue spot on the end of these which means I've not got my material set up quite right so if I select the lot like so and go into the material lab and then I'll re just reduce the frequency slightly that should push that spot off the end so I've got my, my, my little still life set out and what I want to do is add depth of field effect because it's appropriate for looking at things very close to so I'll choose one that's fairly close to the camera at the moment go into uh, render options depth of field set to current selection and check the aperture to 0 0.05 that's the len lens radius and that hopefully will give us a, a little bit of blur in the distance. Oh, in fact the effect wasn't strong enough, it might have been better off where it was. So go back to the render options, turn depth of field on, and uh, not, not 0.1. I'll just investigate a little bit of this. So that's okay. It's slightly softened there. I don't want to overdo this effect. Just want want enough to make it look realistic. I'll go on, I'll add a bit more. Render options 0.2 right the thing that controls how long this is going to take to render I see that's that depth field's quite strong now probably a little bit too strong is the rays per pixel here now at the moment I've got it set at 64 from the final render I'll use 256 if you find it's working a bit slow on your computer you'll set it down a bit and uh, it'll look a bit grainy the image just reduce that slightly but it will render a bit faster so I'm going to say that's about an appropriate level of depth of field. I'm happy with my material. Everything looks about as it should. I'm just going to move the, com uh, the camera slightly to change the composition and line things up nicely. And uh, then I go into render options, set it at 256, and we'll see what it says for the render time. Okay, you can see by the, by the slow progress down the scene that it's going to take a little while. I'm just checking the clock now. Okay. Uh, 34 minutes and 7 seconds so if I'm going to make this a 15 minute tutorial I better pause the video again oh it just occurred to me I want to add one more thing while I was watching this render I realized I thought it might be nice if I had a little bit of reflection on the surface so it made that look a little bit uh, more like a like maybe a, a glass or polished tabletop right pause again here then is the completed render. It took about an hour longer because of adding the reflection on the surface material there. So there you go. We've covered a few different topics including uh, loading HDRI and using Trambian's lighting and uh, I hope that inspires you to make uh, some still lifes of your own.